All right, we'll uh, call to the whole uh, meeting uh, to order. Um, up first, uh, public works walking path policy. So if you recall, a little while back, we had some delegations that came to council as to closing of walking paths. Um, they met with the RCMP, the like, our engineering department, met with the people. They also looked around at some other places, and we believe that the policy that is attached by the city of Saskatoon gives us something that we follow. Right now, we go based on anything and everything when someone complains. So we believe that it was best to have a policy in place that was fair and equitable. And I'm recommending that we look at establishing a policy just like this so that moving forward, we don't have to sit and go through this every time and guesstimate. It has a certain criterion that it has to go through. And we believe that it is a very good policy. Plus, it also forces people to call the RCMP because you're actually doing something about stopping the vandalism rather than relocating it. So I don't know if everybody's had the opportunity. There was a few things in here that were a little iffy that we didn't quite like because we don't have uh, crime prevention through environmental right. design. That was one thing that it looked like yeah. who would well, kind of do that. We believe that would be a committee of like say Matt or staff that are here and the RCMP. We really want the involvement of the RCMP. It also falls under TBCRC. Oh, there you go. That might be something too. It looked, uh, I, I, I like it, I like, I like the city's policy, I think it's great, but it looks like it involves lots and lots and lots of meetings. Um, I think a lot of it is having the person that's making the request be a little more accountable with stuff too, right? Because it is, when we went through this, it was, we do empathize and sympathize with the people that are experiencing the problem. The harshness reality of this is what we do is we relocate the problem elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So we're trying yeah. to look at an actual solution, yeah. period. And it's kind of what we already did. Like, I mean, we already did have a meeting with yeah. the community members who had issues and concerns and, and that sort of stuff. So it's not really, I don't know. Like I said, there's definitely a few little things that we would need to tweak. For but sure. But it's something to at least that we have in place, that we yeah. have everybody's the exact same. And again, forcing people to call the RCMP, right, that's, that's, another that's a huge one. That's the ownership. So we're okay then with the uh, administration digging deeper into this and yes. coming forward with that? Yeah. Policy? Yeah. Just one comment. Uh, I, I like the uh, general outline of the policy. Uh, they did refer to a, a policy with regard to maintenance, yeah. uh, which deals with regular mo uh, maintenance and, and the schedule and, and whatnot, because I, I mentioned a concern before that, that the, the lanes they're talking about are so overgrown, the light doesn't even shine down in there in the evenings and whatnot. And we have to, in, in doing some of this, have some sort of a process to assure that, that, and I think it mentioned in here whether or not it's the responsibility of the town or the landowner to deal with trees and those problems. So as long as that sort of stuff's in there, then... Uh, and I've actually made a little note to establish a policy yeah. on that. Even if it is the property owner and it comes onto the public property, they still have to fix it. We would treat it just like we do with our yard maintenance, where if they don't take the necessary, you know, um, remedies, then we go in and do it and charge them back. Right. Yeah. The important thing is we get it done. Yeah. So, I mean, when the subdivisions were built and the paths were put in, they were all put in there for good and right reasons. And, um, uh, you know, times have changed, and so we need to really have a good, hard look at this. And uh, uh, it's it's really so sad. You see a beautiful home with a, with a nice fence, and then on the walking path side of the fence is just covered in graffiti, and it's it's unfortunate. If I, if I may comment, uh, my concern in, in looking at this and thinking about it is okay. That's that's the problem when those things happen, and often it's probably at night and whatnot, and that. But we cannot forget. The people that use it during the day, the children that go go to the parks, uh, those that are going to be made to to walk around. Although uh, cathedrals, say, uh, got sidewalks and whatnot, it's also a busier street than, than that. So, so when we look at these things, we have to look at how we impact and all our citizens, not just the few that are rate pets. Yep. We just went through, and just to add some more information on that, we just went through uh, Manitoba Housing the secondary plan for their what they're going to be doing with the land behind, this all joins up, right? So yep. this forms a part of it, and that's, yep. that's initially why the walking paths were put in. Okay, anything else? I think okay. it's a pretty functional policy. Yeah. 
something that we can support. Okay, 1.2 is snow removal agreements with MIT. Um, MIT is asking for the status quo for this year. Um, staff recommended that we accept it and we're looking at a resolution to sign. They've increased 3%. Everybody has a hard year. They've been really good with it and we're thinking with the amount of snow that we can accept that. Sorry, Jim, before we yeah. go on to one point, or when we're done with 1.2, I just yeah. wanted to ask uh, a question about 1.1 when 1.2 sure. is done. No, cool. If you want to, is, are we done with 1.2? I, I, I believe we are. Can we have a resolution? We're, yeah, we'll have a resolution, yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes us money. Yeah, it makes us money. Go ahead. Well, my question was only, um, so we had, you know, a request come forward uh, from a group of the public, and so if we're going to, you know, now move into policy development and implementation, it would be good to communicate back to them what they can expect to see um, in terms of happenings on the ground and or communication from administration here. Yeah, so just be we don't want to just leave that open-ended where they're wondering what's happening and we've moved off into policy development yeah. and they're thinking that we're moving into uh, brush cutting and, and lane closure. Okay, good point. Uh, speaking of points, 4.1. Uh, additions and deletions to taxes. Um, we were very fortunate that we had the big development by Manitoba Housing. So overall, in the last uh, taxes and tax additions and cancellations, we are ahead by seventy-two hundred dollars for twenty seventeen tax additions and cancellations. We have already sent out the tax statements so that we can get them included in the board of revision because they have the right to appeals. So we do need a resolution for for this last batch of them. And uh, like I said, we're waiting for Board of Revision. Jenny had a few come in, not very many so far. But I had to get these out to make sure that they were able to do an appeal on their assessments this year. So what okay. we require is a resolution. resolution. Okay. Everyone's okay with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, workplace safety AMM resolution. This is what I kind of alluded to a little earlier. And this is um, as it relates to code of con conduct by being bullied or harassed. This came as a result, if you recall, a couple of months ago, down south there was a bit of an issue where there was such harassment at a council table where members of council actually resigned because of the way a certain individual was treated. So this is saying that this needs to be everywhere. The harassment policy is, again, the code of conduct when we talk about respectful workplace. This is really being pushed by Southern Manitoba and it's an anti-harassment resolution. So they're asking if we could pass this and this is protection to include council members and it's going to be discussed and brought forward at the annual convention, fall convention. How do we feel about that? I'm okay with that. I'm okay. It's yeah, pretty I, general. I, I'll support yeah. that, yep. yeah. Yeah. Okay. support. It's hard, huh? Yeah, like... Uh, the, only, the, only, the only thing is, whatever comes out, it has to have to clearly define these terms yeah. because some, sometimes these things become more politically correct than, than realistic. And if, it, if the end product of, of anything that moves forward doesn't actually change the day-to-day, -day, then it's, it's not, not really a, a valued exercise in that it just didn't get it done. Okay. 4.3 Traffic Festival. Um, this is generally what they ask for every year. Um, I'm saying this is something we budget for. We always support. This is a huge positive in our community. I say we move forward with approving this request. Fine. Uh, this, this is a, a, an annual, uh, again, and as the, the CAO just said, it's it built into the budget and whatnot. Is there any way uh, we can just pass a resolution that going forward it's just presumed that it's something we do? Or, or by bringing it to council in this manner, because I think it makes work for them and it makes work for us. And if somebody falls behind on getting the paperwork done, then it becomes well, questionable because it's not in the budget. And at times, it does change though from year to year. The request does change a bit. And it's Sometimes. also it's also good because it defines the scope really well about who's doing what and what the expectations are. I mean, we don't do an, an insignificant amount of work. And, and I, I mean, while I get where you're coming from in terms of, you know, it's every year it's the same piece of paper, paper very close to it, but I think it, on the festival end, forces them to reconcile what it is they need to tell them to do. On our end, it forces us to reconcile, is that a reasonable expense for what goes on? <coughs> and it's a 
it's excellent that they provide us with the dates that this is happening each year, like um, booklet advertisement when it's due, declaring when it's going to be, what days they want stuff closed. Okay. And just on the festival side, it's not uh, like it's not a big process. Like it's something that we know that we need to do. It we have you know annual grants kind of that we get from different places every year. So you know we have to you know send something to the RM every year. We send something to the province of Manitoba every year. So it just falls in with that process. Okay. All right. Moving on. Four point four. Deputy Mayor and Board appointment. It's that time of year again when in November we go through appointments. So we have them listed here. I don't know if you want to go through them tonight or you want to think on it. Um, we are also going to be sending out your notices for uh, declarations, for your changes this year. So do we want to make these appointments this evening to pass for a resolution at the next meeting? Has people given this any any thought? No. And I think we should wait. Plus we're yeah. not the only thought I, I gave, I gave Joe was, is, is, it, is it something where, where somebody wants to change a position or, uh, which is why we would need to change? Because sometimes it's all of a sudden, well, if somebody was going to resign from, from any one of these things, then he would, but otherwise... Uh, Personally, I, I'm ready to move to PCRC and do something else now. So. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so, so I, we could all just, you know, take the next two weeks to give it some consideration, and we can bring it forward in our next committee meeting. And you know, we can deal with that in November. All right. Um, library building. So, basically, what I'm asking is, is our direction the same? Um, what we've done in the past was we've looked at. Uh, Telling them to be like, we basically admitted that we couldn't look after that building anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure our direction hasn't changed. The last direction I had was that we were going to meet with the RM Kelsey and ensure that we have a clear understanding of what we're doing moving forward. What we've done is in the past, I was advised by council to meet with them and try and come up with some options and some different ideas. And those things just didn't pan out because of the facilities that we had available. My concern again is the affordability of the building, and I think that was the concern of council. So has that direction still stayed the same? Are we still looking at just right now wanting to meet with the RM because we realize that we just are running out of options for how we're going to move forward with that building? I think we need we need to meet with the RM. They're a funding partner in the library. Um, they've been a funding partner in the library um, for a long, long time. And if the reality is that that building needs to be done with, I mean, like we need to no longer be dealing with that building, then that the discussion needs to start with the RM about, about where we go, whether not physically where we go, but about how that conversation evolves. And then at some point that needs to turn into a conversation with the library board and the RM and the town of the Paw, not as large entire groups, but as council representatives. So it would be good, I think, if we have a couple of issues like this, if we can have a joint council meeting with the RM. Yeah. In general, this should be one of the agenda topics. We should be doing it now in front of the budget. And then uh, once we're beyond that, there is a, an RM councilor that sits on the library board. I sit there as a councilor for the town of the Paw. I mean, um, if it is clear that, that uh, we need to be done with that building, then, you know, and the library board is aware of the situation, but they're not aware entirely of is there a time line here. They're not aware of exactly what the expectations are upon them in terms of finding the solution. So. I didn't see, I know, Randy, that you mentioned a, a newspaper article that contradicted what we'd agreed to. I didn't see the article, so I'm not sure exactly what that... Yeah, it was just basically, to. that's kind of where I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page before I start moving any further on this. And it was about, well, we need to supply that service. Of course we do, but our, like, my question is, is we were specifically re, re, uh, bleh, referring to the building itself. That was our concern. And yeah, nothing to do with the operations or anything. It was zero talk building. of not having a public library. Yeah. Of course we're gonna. Yeah, and that's where I was getting at was to make sure we are still going right. forward on that. I talked to the RM. I sent the request right after our last meeting. I sent a reminder again the other day, and they said they hope to have something to me within the next few days for dates. Other we, comments? No. We passed a resolution that said that in 2018, right? I believe it was the end of September 2018. So yeah, I don't. I don't have to double check. There's a resolution, but I remember the 2018. Yeah, when we did that whole the four part, this is what mm -hmm. we're going to do after we did the financial aid. 
to the to yeah. the forestry industry. Um, so I think that that's a, still a reasonable timeline. I think that still gives you adequate time to meet with the RM and and to sit down with the library board and and that sort of thing. So okay, right. Currently now the town provides uh, the building to house the library, and and is that is that a, a, a goal council plans to carry on into the future, uh, whether whether it's in this building or, or another one? I guess there are questions that we need to, to answer, uh, and if we're looking at another building, then or we're we're leaving here, uh, we need to have an understanding as to is this one beyond its life expectancy and, and therefore we're just shutting it down or, or is it is it condemned and we have to shut it down or whatever uh, it is an older building but we, we should try and get some of this information together because some of these reports came to council years ago uh, really and uh, just, just some sort of a, an overview review as to the state of that building and the problems that, that make it impossible to, to maintain it and, and keep it at the library and then of course once you know that and the other question is what do we do about uh, a library building if that's the direction council wishes to go or, or are we going to be looking at partnering in a greater way with, with our neighbors uh, on, a, on a library and a new facility down the road not necessarily new but another facility I believe a lot of that information was already brought forward but yes. we can bring it back again yeah it's just a matter of Remind us what more. Okay. Anybody else? There's Rhino. That building's not getting newer. And the equipment in it is not getting newer. There's light fixtures in there that are 60 years old. There's light bulbs in there that are 60 years old. It leaks. It creaks. It does. It it's, does not have a bright future in the town of the Paw, that building. So we'll have another look at it and uh, we'll see where we take it from there. Anything else on that item? Okay, let's pay some bills. So basically what we require is a resolution for a pay period 21 in the amount of 97,964.80. Checks, general checks in the amount of 269,928.92 and electronic funds transfer in the amount of 84,613.91 for a ground total of 452,507.63. Some of these were over $50,000 for the J.R. Cousin Consultant Report, um, another $62,000 for pension <coughs> earnings, and we have the Recycling Senator Grant for $36,000. So there's some of the, the larger ones. Okay, anybody have any issues on that? Okay, we'll bring forward a resolution on that. I can just back up on the library issue. So you're going to bring this information to us for next meeting? Is that well? Is that your we're waiting to hear from your meeting with the Arne Kelsey. So okay. we're hoping that that's going to happen next. Okay. And okay. in this last, basically, the information we have is saying that the building there has got some foundation issues. It's got the regular maintenance issues, and that's why we had this discussion in the first place. And the other thing is that the library wouldn't natural like wouldn't <coughs> necessarily house the weight and everything else. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, moving on, then. Let's see what is next on here. 4.7 on that website. So my apologies. I wasn't here at the last meeting to uh, receive the presentation made. Um, as you can see, there's different options that were provided. It became abundantly clear that um, maybe it's time we start talking about if this is the route we're doing, which looks pretty amazing in a in a positive way. Yeah. I think we need to start talking about a uh, communications person. This is a lot of work, and this is this is a good good work. Don't get me wrong. This is a really good thing to happen. I just believe that with the time associated in doing all this, we're going to require an additional person to do this and do it well. Okay. I think that you definitely need a communications person, but we should maybe reclassify that as something a little bit different so that we can kind of hold them in as, yeah. as needed, right? So that they're more of like almost like an admin assistant type person who does communication, but sometimes we can hold them in for council-related things yeah. when we have bigger projects and for sure we're working on too. Other thoughts? So I guess my thought being is what are you, you actually looking at? What are you, what are you wanting to see out of this? He's giving you different options here. Right. 
Uh, the one the one option I like uh, that I've seen other communities use is the one where where, where they actually uh, push information right to uh, cell phones and smartphones, and that because that gets it into the hands of everybody, uh, as opposed to websites and stuff are are somewhat different, and, and not everybody uh, would see them in that. I I don't know as well. Uh, to do a review of, of what, we, what we have and are we using it to the max and what additional ones can, can we get in so that if we choose to go the route of a communications person, uh, we can be, no one understand what we're expecting of them. Don't, don't expect them to get there and write the job description, do it the other way around because uh, we really have to be fair to whoever we would put in. And it's going to cost them money if we do it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Anybody else? I, I think um, as someone who sat at this table when we uh, brought in uh, our last website, um, it did not get the attention it deserved. And so um, I think that if we're going to be adding features into our all-net system, perhaps looking into a new website, new ways of communicating, that we should probably uh, set up a committee to, to, to look at this uh, and instead of just making a decision here tonight going, well, okay, A, B, or C, you know, I, I just, uh, it's an investment. I think it's a huge investment. It's not, it's not like a ton of money, but it is, it is how we are communicating with the people in our community and surrounding area. And so I think that it needs due diligence. It's the 20% that gets the 80% value. That's the ones. Well, and it's, it's well, true. Like, if we're going to roll this out and have a good program, it yeah. needs to be done well. Yeah. And so I would suggest... I think we I have a committee of three that are supposed to be working on the website. We are working on a communications policy. If, that, if that's the same group of people that want to take on this and come back with a recommendation, I'm okay with that. How about you? Are you I'm okay with that? You're on it? You're okay with that? You're on it? There we go. We've got ourselves a committee. We're going to go and have a look at this. We'll come back with a recommendation. <laughs> Here's like, what, what just happened? It's <laughs> well, good. like, no, it's about good. a year ago, we made a committee of the three of us that were supposed to sit down and look at website stuff, and then we never actually never. did it. So. No. So, it's important. So, All right. expect um, the recommendation next, uh, next meeting. That's, okay. you, you realize that happened because of our failure with our communication policy. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. We well, it was also that we had a conversation about we don't really have any money to spend on a website. Okay. So why would we talk about, you know, at ease? Yeah. Now we're doing it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's do you have Chris O'Brien and review and come back to committee? It is. Okay. 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 Um, with prodding with from CAOs and people like that. Um, all right, uh, 2015 audit for the town of the Bob. I'm screwed up here. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm okay. sure you've had a chance to uh, peruse this yes. uh, this document. I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, just the main statements, or do you want to uh, the questions right away? What would you like to do? Where would you like me to focus? Well, Main I statements think first. A brief overview would be fine. Sure. Uh, let's flip right to the auditor's report. That's probably the most important page there. Right? Probably. What you see here is a clean opinion from your auditor this year, or for 2015 anyway. Um, so they are agreeing that everything in the statements here is uh, represented correctly, which is good. It means that the books were in good order. It can only get better. I want to flip uh, one more page up to uh, Statement of Financial Position. And what we've got here is a snapshot in time as of December 31st of 2015 of where the town was, its, uh, its assets, its owings, and uh, everything else on the books. So at that time, again, um, just the highlights here, uh, you were a million and a half higher in the bank and in investments, which is good. Um, but that's also reflected in uh, additional reserves that we're supposed to be putting money away for. So it really just kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, same thing with uh, the accounts payable as well, a little bit higher. 
uh, at, at that time I was kind of looking through the books here, Jody had been uh, changing the way that the uh, education taxes were being paid, holding a little bit back that was allowed instead of fronting it all up front, which is good. It keeps money in our pocket in yeah. the longer term. That's great. Um, so just a little bit of a shift kind of across the board. Um, other things to consider here, the uh, recycling center did get pulled out. Um, so that did show a loss this year in 15, just uh, disposing of all those assets. So it does look a little bit more negatively than it really is. Okay. Um, but I mean, the other highlights of this page, I would say uh, your accounts receivable, pretty much par for the year, for uh, the year before 2014, same. Uh, deferred revenue, uh, there was a little bit of shift there. The gas tax moved along uh, from, uh, from another line. It was carried in the reserve lines before. And uh, there was a decrease in the landfill closure liability uh, because that's been pushed along a little bit further. So another bit of a change for you there. Okay. And anything else you want to see on that page? Any questions about that before we flip to uh, the next page? Okay. I'm flip one more. Just the highlights of your operating performance in 15. All said and told, you had $13.6 million come in. Just under $6 million of that was uh, property taxes. Another million of Grant and Lou. Very comparable to the year before. Uh, user fees are up. Uh, there was some uh, additional sales there and uh, related to the wellness and, uh, and some others. Uh, water and sewer was down. Um, but, uh, but it's up again this year, which I thought was a little bit interesting. Um, tying into that, you had $14.2 million of expenses. And uh, all said and told, there was a deficit for the year of about $658,000. Okay. So flip actually one more page before you come in off there. Okay. Um, this next page actually takes that number and massages it a little bit, taking out some of the long-term items. Um, so we've got uh, amortization, uh, inventories, uh, capital assets, stuff like that. So there is a positive change in the in the net debt, which I think it's important to bring uh, attention yeah, to. I mean, sure. because it looks it looks bad when you've got a deficit, but there is a positive uh, uh, change in the net debt, which again, you know speaks positively to the way things are being run around here. So. Good to hear. I mean, outside of that, uh, I mean, I can go into a ton of detail or very little in terms of uh, additional schedules and notes. Um, I think if you've had time to look at them, if you have any questions, maybe that's probably the best place to go where I can suck up a lot of your time. I could talk for on and on and on here for you guys. I don't mind. This is your alley, man. This is my alley. Yeah. Any, uh, any comments or queries? I mean, my biggest thought here is we're looking at 2015. So as good as this information can be and as good as it looks, um, it's, it's dated. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to kind of push this forward as soon as we can to kind of keep moving along to get you some more current information that you can make better decisions. But yeah, the one question I had was when it's 2016 audit. Well, yeah. as soon as I can get this out, I can move along on that one, right? Okay. So. So you're looking for us to approve it by resolution? Correct. Okay. Is there, are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, we'll do that. Thanks, Ryan. Good. Yep. All right, um, I have a motion to uh, move in camera. And we will move in camera. Perfect. All right, thanks, everyone.